Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Focus Rage channel. I'm happy to see you all here and today we're going to be talking about big clients, small clients and what you need to be careful of. Stick all the way till the end because I'm going to be giving you so much valuable information on how you can predict if you're going to have a good relationship or a difficult one with this potential client you're currently speaking with. Now, this video is going to be directed to the B2B solutions mainly. Yes, there's some B2C services and products that is going to help with. Definitely, if you're B2C, stick because you're going to learn a lot. But B2C is usually niched down. If you have a product or a service, you already have a client base. You don't really care if it's a big or a small client. You know, you, you just have a need that you're feeling in or some kind of an emotional attachment to a product. Now, the B2B solutions, regardless of what it is, in the majority of cases, they have a bigger variation. Let's say if it's marketing agencies or DevOps, like software development, you're not going to turn down a big or a small client, an enterprise or an SME or a startup even, right? You're just going to take that if they agree and if you have a good enough sync and you can give them what they want. Yes, you're going to take that uh, type of a project. Now, uh, some background on myself for those that haven't watched. Uh, yes, I've been in sales for 12 years and uh, for multiple years I've been managing even before my own company as a manager and a director teams, sales outsourcing teams. Sales outsourcing is when a company hires us and instead of them building their own sales team, we build the team and we manage that. And I was working for the biggest name out there in the world. I'm not going to mention it. I don't want to do any marketing for them, uh, but you can Google that. And uh, basically we were working mainly with enterprise accounts because enterprise companies you know, enterprise accounts like to work with enterprise accounts. You know, corporate likes to work with corporate. Big names like to work with big names. They don't usually trust or open themselves to smaller companies. And even if they do, the second they go into pay, then their stakeholders or like the investors uh, come back to them and say, hey, don't use my money like that. I don't even know that name. They've been on the market for a couple of years. Not like, let's say, that one for 16 or 12. Go and pay them, even though we all know that corporate usually has a low quality service. So when we were working with corporate clients there, I was really irritated, even though we had some really good results, amazing results, even in some cases, and we were work working with famous companies. I was irritated because big names like to limit you, including your own company. And that's normal. It's like natural. I shouldn't have even gotten, uh, it wasn't the biggest problem for me, but it definitely, you know, stuck to me because I wasn't used beforehand to getting limited on how I work and where I go, including when that's all, that's actually going to make more revenue. It was kind of strange to me. So at that point, I was like, God damn it, you know, this enterprise accounts, this is really not the best. We should be working with something a bit different. However, when I started working with my own company, even though, by the way, in the beginning, I wasn't even doing sales outsourcing, I was doing sales training and business consulting. Uh, and uh, slowly but surely I started moving from just sales to sales and marketing and to sales, marketing, business processes, systems and everything else that I can help with and consult on. And uh, last year, for about, I guess now a little bit, like almost one year, I've been doing sales outsourcing, hence companies have been building teams through me and I've been managing those teams, sales teams. Now uh, I've had uh, eight really good projects in that time and uh, a couple with some smaller firms and uh, two projects uh, that I did an exception on, we did a compromise with them, taught me something really, really valuable and special. You need to understand why the client is coming to you with the requirement of you building a team and why they don't build it before you do anything like that. So. By the way, you can take this and if you're an IT company and you're building systems or software development teams, it's going to help you as well. If you're another type of a service provider, a vendor, it's going to help you. If you're a marketing agency, listen to me, I'm going to help you. If you're a digital design agency, I'm still going to help you. All right. So listen to me really carefully here. If it's a startup, let's say if it's a startup, you can really go in so many directions like that potential client that comes in when they are a startup what i really learned that i should care about is the people the leaders the owners 
it's usually one, two, three owners, right? You go and you just evaluate them on what kind of a person they are. And I, I really mean just not just the experience and the knowledge, but also their morals. Because this is something that will basically affect the startup the most. You know, when startups have a lot of pressure, uh, they have not just from investors, but from the market and from the competition. And uh, those people, depending on how they think and how they, they react to certain situations, are either going to grow the company or damage the company. And you, as a service provider, are going to get affected or even some in some cases, you're going to take the blame. So if it is a startup, fair enough. Uh, we, we're not looking at the fact on whether or, or, this, or whether or not this is going to be a big or a small company. We're looking just at the people. So let's skip the startups. Let's go to companies that have been on the market for, let's say, three years or more, right? So they have some kind of a product. It can be digital, it can be a service, it can be SaaS, like, right? It can be anything. It can be something related to e-commerce, to automation. You get the idea. Why has this company, especially if they come to you, why have they been having issues with their revenue or sales? Why haven't the leaders been able to build a team that is actually, uh, you know, growing the company? Not just on the sales part, but let's say on marketing or something else. Why have things not been working for them? When you start understanding that and when you go there, you're going to start realizing slowly but surely if you're going to be able to work with this type of a client in a positive direct and useful and constructive manner because i have a big range of services as i said from sales training to business consulting to uh, sales outsourcing to marketing right and right now i'm even partnering with my own clients to offer their solutions as well and uh the clients that come in, and I'm not even talking here about whether or not the company has been for 10 years or five years on the market, because some of them have been for a long time, others for, as I said, three or four years. But the people that usually come in and they are, um, they are comfortable with paying the full price of the services, they don't usually bargain on the price because it's B2B, right? Like you can bargain, right? But they don't usually bargain on the price. They don't ask questions on the cost. They ask questions on the solution. They ask questions on potential risks. They ask questions on the types of processes. Those clients are amazing, amazing. I really, uh, they know who they are. If they're watching the video, I, I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you so much for being such amazing people and professionals because this is what the world and the business uh, needs the most. Uh, this has proven to me not just in my own company, but also in the past when I was working, as I said, as a manager and a director of teams, that like it's always related to the success of the project. Those types of projects and companies always have the biggest success. They always have the biggest results. Even if it takes some time, they get the results done because they have the patience and they have the professionalism. So when you get those clients, I don't need to go more into this. I'm sure you, <laughs> I'm sure you know them. You're not going to turn them back. It's the conversation is always amazing. And you have to, of course, be professional yourself and guarantee what you're giving. Now, when you get the client, however, usually that is uh, bargaining on the price or uh, that is constantly trying to push through his own ideas, even before you start or they have questions towards your people, hence, even though they are going to hire a team through you, they are still questioning how you're gonna do it. Well, you know, why haven't you done it yourself? So when you get that type of a client, please, 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 regardless of what agency, company, service provider you are, be really careful. I have learned from firsthand that sometimes, as I said, from those, let's say two projects, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. First of all, you make compromises because of the price that they're bargaining on to your service. Always. I mean, you cannot provide the same unless you're like overpriced as hell. For me, we are not, for instance. So our service is directly correlated to the price. If you reduce the price in a specific sense or uh, you, you compromise there, the service also goes down. Like you're working with people. You cannot. This doesn't stay here. It goes down with the price. So when you make those compromises, 
even though you might communicate it to the small clients, even though we might explain them, hey, this is gonna reduce that, and we're not gonna be able to do this, and uh, you know, this is basically going to endanger the success of the project. Do you understand that, Mr. Client? And the client says, yes, yes, I totally understand that. Absolutely, George, absolutely. Please, let's do it like this. I'm happy that you agreed to a lower price or whatever, uh, even though we're not gonna be getting this or that, right? Let's do it. And you make the mistake on starting off, believe me, the money was not the problem. The money was not the problem. The problem was the mindset. If uh, this type of a client is not willing to pay uh, what you're worth and they are not also willing to understand fully what you're saying, what makes you think they're going to be able to understand down the line if the project is having issues that the fault is not just yours but you know it's shared that there's issues here issues there usually the product might be shit uh usually the service might be slow maybe they cannot organize i'm telling you by the way these types of people when when they come in and they bargain on the price and they also you know just kind of create issues internally in the project these are people that also generally speaking in their own company they've been working it for like three four five years ten years they micromanage their employees, they're usually really stressed out and they stress out other people. Uh, they can be quite negative, they cannot handle uh, any um, variations of risk on the project, right? Like they, they cannot take bigger risks, like they're paying you this, so work with that. Even though you have to try out something new, let's say run an additional marketing campaign, even if it's a uh, hundred bucks, hundred euro, it's too much. Uh, and by the way, that's like, you know, that's like pennies, but you get what I mean. I'm just giving you a, an idea here. So these types of clients, there is a reason for them to not have money. There is a reason for this type of a client to not have success with his service or product. There is a reason for this type of a client to not be able to communicate. There is a reason for this type of a client to come to you to be saved, quote unquote, even though they don't even see the mistake in, the, in themselves. Now, I'm not saying that the whole fault is theirs, that they're in such a position, but there is a reason for that. And I, up until now, I see, and that's why I make this video, 100% correlation between a client that would come in and try to reduce the cost, the value and everything on the project, just so he can do something like that. And their lack of success in the company, their employees being stressed out the negative, uh, them creating additional issues. And at the end of the day, you know what's the saddest thing? If the project really doesn't go through and you know you cannot be 100% successful in everything that you do, you, you're gonna be blamed. And uh, you definitely have a fault that you took the project and yeah, you did your best. But uh, you know, it's uh, the, like this type of a responsibility is always shared. And you need to understand that when you go there from that type of a client, you're not gonna see any mercy. The, the fault is 100% yours usually, and uh, you just gotta take it, and you need to take that responsibility because you took the project. So yeah, it is 100% your responsibility. Does that make sense? So for you to kind of, uh, you know, move away from that and uh, also have some dignity and have some self-respect, uh, I know for myself that I am not gonna take such clients at all anymore, at all. Uh, I have, uh, for those two clients that I said, I did, an, I, I did an exception, uh, we did our best. Uh, we had, by the way, results, but not the desired results. Uh, and obviously at the end of the day, it was a pretty negative relationship uh, that, uh, you know, it, it was just unnecessary, uh, how can I say it? Uh, yeah, problems. Yeah, I think it's, it's just, there's no need to do things like this. Whereas with the clients that actually pay and actually work with us and have patience and have uh, the proper professionalism to build a relationship, we've had the same issues with them. And you know what? We were able to fix them. And you know what? We got results. And you know what? The client is making money. As funny as it sounds uh, to some of the smaller clients that currently hate my guts that because I'm maybe saying this and they're like offended. But if you're offended, you need to look at something in yourself maybe. Uh, the the idea here is try to evaluate the client that you're getting, the potential client. Try to evaluate why their business is in that specific direction and always start from the mindset. Always start from the mindset. 
Uh, and by the way, if you're looking at, by the way, if you're looking at like some, there's business coaches out there, you know, like go into their seminars and they teach you how to build a company from zero to 100 from a family like you and your wife go there and you start like a business and you become millionaires. And, and, and those types of coaches, like sales coach, business coach, marketing coach, right? I have like, that's so dangerous to, to push such an idea because right now in today's world, there's so many of those. It, that's such a dangerous idea because you you that the coach is not doing anything for that company like you go into the seminar or like a master class or whatever uh, you go there and he just talks to you but he has no direct contact with you with your employees with your uh, with, with your family if even if it's a family business no direct contact with what you do day to day like you're there like three hours in the day or like one weekend right and he puts this this idea in your head that you 100 percent need to be successful and you have everything that you need to be that so why is that client not a billionaire in, uh, why is that coach not a billionaire why is not every small business a a, a, multi, a, a multi-million dollar you know uh company you know it, it, it's such i'm sorry to say this bullshit. like you need to have a bit more brain than to just go out there to get into like some kind of a class and get coached that uh success is just given to you like you have you gotta have it and if you don't have success as a small company it's, it's somebody else's fault this is not how the world works and that's why not 100 percent of the projects are successful regardless if it's uh, a marketing service some kind of another solution or something else it cannot be that this, this is not how it works and also there's so much competition out there you need to understand that for you really to have a success it's not just even internally with you as a person and as a business and as a leader you're also competing with others like everybody forgets do you understand you're competing with others you understand you gotta be like uh, on top of your game all the time so when you're listening to this you might uh remember something that you saw online or on youtube or facebook from a coach like this please like get that out of your head it's not bad like you you de definitely with the coach you can learn a lot of useful things uh but in a seminar in like a master class or something okay take the info it's cool i've done those as well but I, even in my master classes i tell the clients and the people please understand this is never gonna guarantee your success now you have you, you have to take this you have to go and do it you have to do one million other things and you have to be balanced and not stress out right nobody's looking at you when you're doing that or when you're not doing it so yeah uh you know i with with these words i just also tried to kind of support as much as i can in the small businesses that in sadly from one way to, ar to to another like in some cases you like they just think that success needs to come and you gotta work for that and it's so much work it's so much work internally and patience and not just testing new things but also following up on old things that sometimes you gotta keep even for half a year one year for them to work like that's business so don't expect for you to get a magic wand and also to do it for pennies and also to get somebody that can just fix your business and they they clap their hands and now you're on the sky even if you had and by the way i've seen that the, the biggest issue is for business owners that have more than 10 years on the market in a specific industry it's almost impossible for you to convince them that they're doing something wrong like in their head it's like he's been like it's a 40 50 60 year old guy who am i george to convince him that there's something that we need to change right but that's the case like uh the the planet isn't waiting for you it's not waiting for me it, it keeps spinning people keep doing more and more innovative things uh, not just uh, on the service but on the it front and you can go to sleep or you can just admit your mistakes and try to actually build better relationships because if you have good enough relationships as a small business you would really be able to grow you will really be able to grow and in some cases that takes more than just like a single project more than just testing something for three months or six months because that's like nothing sometimes it takes like really serious work especially by the way for those guys out there in the it sector something related to it let's say your market is so saturated it's so saturated it's crazy like there's so many it solutions out there 
it all sounds the same to the clients. You need to have patience on that, including, let's say, maybe design, marketing agencies, understand that the market is saturated. It's not like you're not in 2015 or 2012. So I hope that I was able to kind of get my point across. Obviously, you know, this video didn't have structure. Yes, I was like maybe blabbering left and right. It's because I don't want to have structure. I don't want to plan out these videos. I want to be natural just like we all should be, just like we should be when we go into a meeting and we're discussing a problem and exchanging ideas. So, in short, don't go cheap, don't reduce your cost, don't reduce your value. The second you do that, maybe it's gonna work, but if it doesn't work, it's still your fault. And at the end of the day, we're not here to work for money, we're here to work to help and assist people and businesses. And that's how you get to the real success. And money is just an added bonus for that. Now, I've seen that many times, my clients have seen it. So please remember that. And of course, I wish you all happy, healthy, and successful relationships with all of your clients, regardless if they're big or small or any other type of a company or individual clients. And, you know, obviously for those that don't agree with me, I hope that, you know, some time passes and you understand what I'm saying and maybe that's that would be the time when uh, so, some things can change. So I wish you all an amazing, amazing day and I'll see you next time. Have a nice one.